Hello and welcome to this James Bike Eye where today I'm getting to show you a bike that I think might be one of the biggest changes year over year in Trex history. I'm not entirely sure that that's hyperbolic, but I do want to talk it over with you, show you the new features and designs of this 2024 Trek Roscoe 6, the least expensive rowdy hardtail in Trex lineup. All right, talking Trek Roscoe. And in fact, the Roscoe 6, as I said earlier, the least expensive bike in Trek's lineup and one that might just offer some of the biggest upgrades year over year that I've seen from Trek, at least in the last decade. And that's because this bike comes with a brand new Trek Roscoe frame. And you might be saying, yeah, well, no big deal. But the big deal here is that in 2023, when the new Trek Roscoe frame came out, Trek decided not to give it to the least expensive model, the Roscoe 6. And so this alpha gold aluminum frame, which features a much longer front end, much slacker head tube, much steeper seat tube, and a playful chainstay length, really was just not available on the least expensive model. And so that meant last year you had to choose to either pony up some extra cash to get up to the Roscoe 7 to get the new frame, or know that you're foregoing all of those benefits, plus the benefits of through axle and things that you otherwise were expecting in 2023. The other place where I think this is one of the biggest year over year adjustments is for $1,200, $1,199, which is basically the same price as the 2023. They've added air shock in the front ends, the new Shimano Q's drivetrain we'll get into in a little bit, factory tubeless ready setup, a dropper post, and the truly capable hardtail. For somebody that's on a slightly smaller budget, I know $1,200 is not cheap, but considering what you're getting here, it's not a bad deal. First off, that brand new frame. And what's neat about this frame is this is of course that alpha gold aluminum, but what it comes with is a much more rowdy and capable geometry. Trek went ahead and lengthened the front end of the bike, so the reach of the bike got much longer. In a size medium large, this bike would have 455 millimeters of reach, which puts it right in with a modern trail bike. You've got a super slack head tube angle of 65 degrees going through this 140 millimeter fork. You've got a chainstay length out back of 430 millimeters, which means the rear end of the bike is shorter than the front, so it's gonna play real nice for manuals, getting that front end up and around things. However, it'll still climb pretty well because they outfitted it with a seat tube angle of 73.1 degrees. So a steeper seat tube angle, that slack front end, longer reach, and then of course the short chainstay should allow this bike to be super playful but Trek also went ahead and updated the Roscoe 6 with 29 inch wheels. So this may be something that you were queuing in at the beginning, but these 29ers come on the bikes that are sized small to extra large, come with 29ers. And the 29 inch wheels are also fitted with these Bontrager Gunnison 2.6 inch wide tires. Now this 2.6 tire is almost like a crossover of their XR4 and the XR5 tire. And what's pretty neat about these guys is again, new for the Roscoe 6. It's both tubeless ready, mounted up on these line TLR tubeless wheels, but it comes factory set up tubeless running some Shimano hubs. And that's a pretty solid wheel set on a bike that again is about 1200 bucks. Not cheap, but very, very capable. I also love that along with this new frame, you still get the capability of running a down tube water bottle cage and on sizes medium and larger, you'd have a seat tube cage. This of course is a size small, which is keeping it from having that uh, second seat tube set up, but it does look super rad with that tiny frame and these big old wheels. Now the size extra small, as I said, that's still gonna come with 27 and a half inch wheels. That's gonna allow the standover to work out properly. And the max tire size on this bike is what it comes with, which is the 29 by 2.6 or 27.5 by 2.6 on the extra small. Should mention though, if we look inside of the frame, I bet you you could snake in a little bit wider tire 
but Trek specifically calls out that you can't run this bike with the 27 and a half inch plus tires, the 27.5 by 2.8s that they were running on the prior generation. And that's because the bike is also featuring a pretty low bottom bracket to help keep your center of gravity low. But as you get to that smaller wheel size, bottom bracket would come down and you'd start smacking your pedals on the ground. Speaking of protection for smacking things, down tube has this down tube armor. This is something that you see on their more expensive bikes like the Fuel EX, which this is kind of like a, let's call it a budget Fuel EX with just front suspension. You do have uh, routing for your cables on the inside, a nice little spot to zip tie them in. So these guys don't rattle as you go through. And out back on the chainstay, you're gonna have this chainstay wrap, external cable routing that runs through the chainstay wrap, but then goes underneath the threaded bottom bracket and back in to the down tube. Another piece that's pretty neat around this threaded bottom bracket is you see that screw hole back there, another mount down there. Those are ISCG tabs. So you can run a full on chain guard, a chain guide up top if you wanted to, a bash guard down below, whatever you want to kind of customize this bike into exactly what you need. Now, earlier I was mentioning this is the rear axle. That of course is true. And you'll also notice that it's got this new SRAM UDH universal derailleur hanger. It's a nice feature to be added because now instead of having derailleur hangers, which is a sacrificial part that's designed to snap if you smash your drivetrain into a rock, keep the drivetrain and the rest of the bike safe and uh, sacrifice a $20 part, whatever those cost. UDH means that it's a universal derailleur hanger, so it's gonna be much easier to get in the future as well as because so many brands have jumped onto the UDH bandwagon, you could probably buy one and it would work with more than one bike if you had a few. Let's check out the Shimano Hughes drivetrain. So Hughes is brand new for 2024. We started seeing it come in on a few bikes in late 23. Now Hughes itself comes in a bunch of different formats too, but Hughes all works together. You can kind of swap different parts together and this being the, the u4000 rear derailleur means it's gonna be able to operate through this 11 to 46 tooth q's nine speed cassette now this is a place where i do actually wish that the setup was a little bit nicer but you can upgrade it to a 10 speed if you wanted to get a little bit tighter spacing between those two largest cogs and it drives through to the front of this fsa alpha drive crank set Crank set is a one by running a 28 tooth narrow wide chain ring. Pretty sweet setup that we have there. And up on the cockpit, you'll see the Shimano Q's shifter, thumb button to go to an easier gear, index finger to go to a harder gear. And then of course, we're met by some Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. This is a two piston caliper on the front and the rear, clamping down on a 200 millimeter front rotor and 180 millimeter rear rotor. While we're up front, let's check out the fork as well. This of course is the SR Suntour XCR34 fork. The XCR34 fork is a 140 millimeter fork. The way that it comes on the bike, it runs 34 millimeter stanchions. You do have this compression knob adjustment for the damping unit to be able to firm up the front end as needed. Down low on the drive side, you also have a rebound adjust to speed up or slow down the speed at which the front end compresses and comes back. And then over on the non-drive side is of course the cap where this is now air adjustable. Air adjustment is brand new for the Roscoe 6. Previously, it had been a coil fork with almost no adjustment. And so the ability to add or remove air pressure as needed, just with your shock pump there, get it dialed in to exactly how you want the bike to feel is such a needed and valuable improvement. Now over on the left-hand side, the last thing to mention is it does come with a dropper post. It means when you pull that lever, the saddle can come up. You put your weight on it, push the lever, the saddle's gonna come down and that's gonna allow you to get that saddle out of the way for when you're descending and up when you need it to be able to be climbing. And it's a nice feature to be added to this 2024 Roscoe 6. Well, now that we've gone over all of those cool features that have been added, I'm gonna jump in to find out exactly what it weighs and leave me a comment down below so you can let me know what you think about this new iteration of the Roscoe 6. All right, and the Roscoe 6 is gonna come in and weigh.
31.6 pounds. Thanks for joining me to check out the Trek Roscoe 6. Go ahead and let me know those thoughts down in the comments section below. While you're at it, be sure to browse the channel to see other cool things to check out as well. And I look forward to seeing you out on the trail.